All right. Let's talk about No Way Out, which I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I was there live. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned in the newsletter, I have now been there live for WrestleMania last year, No Mercy, and No Way Out. Three of the best pay-per-views probably in years. So, next time you hear that I'm going to a pay-per-view, you'll know to buy it. Because it's going to be great. You know, I was thinking, I was not at No Mercy, but I was thinking of how many pay-per-views I have been to. I've been to uh, WrestleMania last year, and uh, of course, No Way Out two, two days ago. And I was at WrestleMania in Seattle, which was an awesome show. And I was at the Spring Stampede show that uh, WCW did that was shockingly an awesome show. Yeah. And I thought, that's every paper you've ever been to has been good. And then I remembered that crappy In Your House they did in Vancouver. I didn't go to that one. Yes, you did. Oh, yeah, I did. Had the Austin Undertaker That's right, because match. on the way back, we argued with Brent about why he didn't eat pork. <laughs> That's right. That That's was. A... I don't even remember the pay-per-view, but I remember well, that. The pay-per-view was bad. The car, the car ride was fun, but yeah, so so the, the never-seen-a-bad-pay-per-view live streak for me is, is dead. I was at Brock and Randy. I was there for GSP killing BJ Penn and Lyoto getting the knockout of the century. I've been to a lot of great shows, everybody. So get WrestleMania this year, which I'm also going to, is guaranteed... To be good, because I'm on a roll here. I'm on a roll, and people can say that the the uh, the BJ Penn show wasn't really all that good, and the first eight matches were all decisions. But I'm strictly talking about pro wrestling here. Every <laughs> every why recent bring it up? pro wrestling show. Well, I just want to throw those in there as well because those were also the the main events on both shows were fabulous. So um, so that as well. All right. Um, this was a, a great show, a fucking great show. Yeah. There were some fucking great matches on it. Well, there were two. There was some uh, horrible bullshit on it in some places. In fact, in one of the excellent matches, there was bullshit. Uh, the bullshit being Vladimir Kozlov. Mm, yeah. I uh, I attended, a bunch, bunch of people actually attended, a bunch of us. Craig, Buddy Rob, Craig's friend Bill, Vinny, of course. And we all sat away from each other. Yes, we sat in at least three separate pairings. I have no idea how that worked out, but it did. Well, I can explain, I can, eh, I can explain mine. I'm not paying $80 for a ticket. I paid, but with the ticket master fee, it came to in the low 30s. I was in the second to last row of the arena. See, you should have you should have paid no, the 80 No, you're wrong. I sat, my, I sat there the, watching the whole show, not watching the monitors, not even tempted to watch the monitors, watching the match unfold beneath me and thinking, this was a great way to save 50 bucks. All right, well, I, I was watching it from uh, from several rows up, and I thought, this is a fucking fantastic way to spend $80. I actually saw the entire show. I didn't just see the uh, the cement above my head as I, as I sat one row away from the roof. So, this show uh, opened up with the first Elimination Chamber match, the SmackDown match. Undertaker Show, Kozlov, Triple H, Jeff Hardy, and Edge... Kozlov is the story of this match. I don't give a shit what anybody says. And uh, Vinny, again, you were you were up in the fucking rafter, so I don't want to hear you tell me that Kozlov wasn't that bad. No, no, he, he was, was so horrible. He was one of the worst wrestlers I've ever seen in my entire life. I have been to a lot of Tulalip shows with with guys that have been in the ring for a few years. Not a single one of them was worse than uh, worse than Kozlov. He almost single handedly ruined this match. He fucking sucked. I, I don't even know any more powerful way to say this. He was wretched. He was horrible. He was an embarrassment to this business. He deserves to never wrestle again. The, the snake eye spot in particular I had a perfect profile view of that. He could not get up on Undertaker's shoulder and then could not actually... All he had to do is go down. Let gravity let you go and you'll pay, your head should hit the turnbuckle. Not him. He found a way to screw that spot up. And then as you noted in the newsletter, Undertaker proceeded to kick him in the face really hard. God, this guy so, was yeah, horrible. When, when he was not botching stuff, uh, he was doing, for example, a bear hug on the mat. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, there's, uh, it, it is time, I think, to uh, concede the Kozlov experiment has failed. Send this fucking guy back to the Jarrett's, for Christ's sake. And That's then, where he yes, came from. Yes. Send him back to TNA. Perhaps they were trying to sabotage your business. Have him go be shitty there. I don't need to see him anymore. The best part of this match was actually when he tried to leave. <laughs> when he got eliminated and he rolled outside, and there's one fucking cage door. There's one way to get out, and he was unable to do so. 
So um, instead of rolling back into the ring and then rolling out on the right side that he was supposed to roll out on in the first place, I presume, he attempted to squeeze between the ring post and the pod. Failure. <laughs> deep failure. failure. Deep, deep failure. He failed at every task to which he was assigned. Yes. He failed to wrestle correctly. He failed to do all of his spots correctly. He failed getting out of the fucking cage. He just failed. And then, as he finally did reach the cage door, two other guys were doing a spot and nearly fell into him. Yes. Because it took him so goddamn long to get out, they didn't think he would be there. If this guy is like... Uh, they got to get rid of this guy. They have to. I cannot keep watching him have bad matches. This was the worst ever. I almost felt sorry for the guy, but I don't. He's been working on the road... Every night, guys like Triple H, guys like Jeff Hardy, the fact that he's not improved, this business is not for him. There you go. Back to TNA. Back to Sambo. Yeah, fine. Go back to Sambo. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. Go to UFC. Go to UFC. They could use a mad rush. Affliction. Go to Elite XC. Or show uh, Strike Force. Go <laughs> somewhere. Go somewhere where you don't have to pretend to wrestle and can and fail. So that made me mad. And then, uh, of course, it came down to uh, Undertaker and Triple H as the last two, and they had an awesome little battle. Traded a bunch of spots, this, that, and the other thing. And, and then uh, Hunter finally uh, pinned him with a second pedigree. And uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it was great. 13 titles. Fans, fans around me were split. Some, I, I think most of them wanted Undertaker to win. There were a few that were behind Triple H, but the vast majority where I was wanted uh, Undertaker to get the title. I knew that was not happening. But uh, the match itself, if you, uh, I gave it four and a quarter stars because Kozlov ruined so much of it early. But uh, the final moments were awesome. The only thing I can really say, first of all, by the end of this match, I mentioned that after, after SmackDown, I was thinking, they're not going to do Taker and Hunter at Mania, are they? By the end of this match, I was convinced, they're going to do Taker and, and Hunter at Mania, and it's going to be awesome. So, keep that in mind. Uh, well, the, they're not. I know that. I realize that now, but that, that, that's how much things changed in three shows' time. Um, the other great thing that no one has talked about yet, really, is uh, we, by now you all know that Edge was eliminated in like three minutes when he went for a spear and got small packaged by Jeff. Here's the great thing. They were the first two in the in the match, and so after Edge got pinned, there was nothing else going on to distract everyone. The wrestlers, the ref, the fans, anyone. All you could do was watch Edge, throw a tantrum, and then do the greatest walk of shame in WWE history. When he the, the match came to a halt, no everyone else was in their pod. Jeff stood in the center of the ring. We all watched them open the door, and a broken-hearted Edge walk out the ring and down the aisle. Fans were singing at him. Fans were laughing at him. That Actually, no, they were. They were attempting to sing the goodbye song, but it's Seattle, and there is absolutely no rhythm in this town. True. And they so amazingly fucked this up that I would guess that everybody watching had no idea they were even trying. Yeah, but regardless, that was an, a, 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 an awesome, awesome awesome moment. I would I would add the quarter star back to the match that Kozlov took out of it just for that. Well, it was it was actually two stars. Oh, well. But I added a lot for the walk of shame. I won't, won't add up. And yeah, Kozlov's bad. Kozlov sucks. Uh, this actually was an idea that Heyman had many years ago. He wanted CM Punk to eliminate the big show with a choke in the first, uh, or the I, chamber I, match in 2006. Do you recall him reading that? Yes. Six. And uh, yeah, Vince said, dumb idea. So anyway, Randy Orton and Shane McMahon so, uh, this was the match that everyone dreaded, particularly myself. I paid for this fucker. Yeah. And the video package was absolutely retarded, where they explained that uh, Randy Orton was now the hunted. Hunted okay. by Shane McMahon. I, I, hunted. Yes, that's absurd and appalling and ridiculous. But, <laughs> given that the video crew was set, told, you need to make a video saying Shane's hunting Randy Orton... They did an awesome job. They, they had an impossible task, which they nearly accomplished. But in the end, it was still the 38-year-old pudgy son of the owner uh, trying to... 39. Uh, whatever he is. Take, trying to take down... That's even worse. Try, trying to take down the 29, I would think, uh, uh, top heel on the roster. Maybe the top guy overall on the roster. And that was retarded. Now, there are things I could bitch about here, like uh, Shane McMahon beating him up early. Yeah. And then Shane McMahon uh, pretty much having the match won before dudes ran in to save Orton. But if you ignore all that, um, Randy Orton, as a worker, 
was quite phenomenal in this match. Quite phenomenal. At least Shane has, has gotten some wins, so he was able to uh, to go the whole time here. And as noted, the legacy ran down as, as uh, Shane was going to give him the coast-to-coast drop kick. And um, they he basically beat them both up. And at least this time it was because they fucked something up and one whacked the other with a chair. And then he tried a flying elbow off the post and, and uh, missed Orton and went through a table and was killed. And then they got back in the ring, and and, uh, Shane actually made yet another comeback and was setting up for a punt of doom. And as he was setting up for it, every fucking person in the building, at least in my section, knew full well what was going to happen. They were on the edge of their seats. They were fantastically excited. And when he hit the move, the RKO, everybody went ballistic, and it was an awesome, awesome finish. And uh, that was the end of of Shane McMahon for the evening. For for that evening. And, uh, yeah, this was uh, great. Yeah, um, I, I cannot get into it because it was all just so, so stupid. I, I, I tried to enjoy it for what it was, and Randy Orton is indeed amazing. He, he is one of those guys who, who, is, who is entertaining doing absolutely everything. He is entertaining getting to his feet. He is entertaining looking side to side. He's never not on, and uh, he, he's, uh, he's astoundingly great. Uh, Shane McMahon is not. <laughs> and and uh, to see right before the finish... To see Randy Orton begging off as Shane stood over him and laid in the punishment, just fucking retarded. And, and so they did the big finish, and yeah, that's great. Jack Swagger and Fit Finley for the ECW title, a failure of a match. Swagger won. I gave it a star just because, I don't know why, actually. Because why they were better than Kozlov. But uh, no one in the entire building cared what iota about this match. The children, who were all excited to be see Hornswoggle, didn't even care once the match started. Uh, and then the match ended, and people were overjoyed. Yeah, a large part of it is because of the uh, the position of the match. We had already seen the big giant chamber match for the WWE title, followed by the uh, Anything Goes match, which featured guys getting hit in the head with TV monitors and bodies flying through tables. And then here were two men exchanging holds. Fail! Complete fail. And uh, there was a bit where Hornswoggle uh, came out, and this distracted Finley, and, and no one cared about that. And yeah, as I, I texted you, I was sitting uh, <laughs> I, to my left, and behind me were some of the most annoying fans I've ever seen in my life. But to my right was a bunch of 10- and 11-year-old kids who thought that because this is a pay-per-view, that meant they were fighting for real. And these kids were awesome. I love these children. And uh, they were very excited to, horn- excited to see Hornswoggle, who came out with Finley and then immediately dove under the ring, and they stopped caring. We had JBL and Shawn Michaels. Oh, by the way, they announced it, of course. Uh, Shane was going to the hospital, going in and out of consciousness and all this, and I just thought, you ate an RKO, you pussy. Now, when you say they announced this, they only did this on TV, right? Yeah. As I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea. But anyway, it was the, the point is that... Um, and it was off just the one RKO. One RKO. Yeah, and he fucking hit his opponent with a monitor to the head and busted him open hard way, and he's the one going to the hospital because <laughs> of an RKO. Indeed. Pussy. Then we had JBL and Shawn Michaels all or nothing. I thought it was uh, pretty good. I thought Shawn worked hard. I thought JBL held up his end of the bargain all right. Rebecca was out there at ringside, all uh, quite boobalicious this evening, and did their stuff. It was uh, what it was. And then as JBL was working him over outside, Rebecca slapped him, and this caused Shawn to uh, fire up, and he ran wild. And he beat the crap out of JBL. He did all of his moves, and then he super kicked him and pinned him. It was the end of the feud. <laughs> yes, That's it all was. I could say. It was a decisive finish I, to a feud. That is, that is certainly true. It was one of those matches where I gave it two and a quarter stars, but I enjoyed it much more than that. If that See, makes I, any sense. Yeah, well, it does. But I I thought it sucked. I thought it was very very boring incredibly boring for, for the vast majority of it. It was JBL slowly, methodically working over Sean. And uh, no one cared. No one bought him the story. No one thought JBL was going to win. No one cared if he won. And the action was, was I, I guess, on par for JBL. See, you mentioned that you had low expectations because you watched JBL Cena and it sucked. And that's true. I had hope for this because Sean's better than Cena. Yeah, so I thought it'd be a little better. I thought she al- was. Well, it was. I guess. I guess they it went was... from a star and a half to two and a quarter. That's I, an improvement. I suppose this is better than the Cena match, but it oh, was. Oh Christ, yes. It was very, very boring. Just, just awfully boring. Right until the part where Sean's wife hit JBL, which I guess is not a DQ if it's self-defense. I, I guess she felt threatened by the giant angry Texan, and she struck him, and so the ref did not uh, disqualify her. But that that made no sense. 
I will also forgive them for this because while it made no sense, it was the only part, the first time anyone in this match cared about anything. So great for them. And then it made Sean fire up. He went through his comeback. It was quite routine, except for the part where he wanted JBL to get up for the body slam, and JBL was still down, and so he had to go over and pick him up. So Has anyone ever been disqualified for a fan slapping a wrestler? It was not a fan. It was his wife. But it doesn't matter. She was still like a fan in the crowd. I suppose not. I I, I had no problem. I didn't even think that this should have been a DQ. It's not like she jumped the rail and got in the ring or something like that. She slapped the man. People get slapped all the time. People get slapped to the announce table. People get slapped by managers. Happens all the time. It wasn't like she hit him with a bottle or a chair. I see. That would be a DQ. So, yeah. So so then Sean, he, he was prepping. He did his whole comeback, and he hit the big elbow, and he, as he always does, he started pumping his arms like crazy. And maybe it's just because I was live, but this seemed like he was putting so much more energy into that than he usually does. It just seemed like he was actually literally begging, please, people, for the love of God, please care about my match. Well, this was the big moment. And to his credit. M- months and months worth of build. And it worked. People did care. They got into the finish. But the the last 60 seconds of this was great. Everything else, giant snoozer. So then we had the uh, interview with Jericho, which I never saw. Apparently, he talked about the... Uh, I don't know, even know if this aired or if I was somewhere I think, else. Uh, this one I did see. Um, it was I, I didn't pay any attention to it. It, it seemed to be your standard... Uh, Jericho, you're in the pay-per-view in a, in a little bit. What's going to happen? I'm going to win. Okay. That's, that's all I got out of it. We had the Raw Elimination Chamber match. Cena, Knox, Kane. And then Kofi came out to be the fourth in the pod. And who should jump him but Edge? Beat the shit out of him, uh, left him laying, and then uh, and as he was beating on him, there were some fans to my right who uh, they were like kind of like I guess they were kind of like me and you, except they dis- they disagreed about fundamental things like whether or not Edge is any good. And <laughs> really, as, as Edge ran down, one of them was screaming, "Yes, yes, Edge is gonna win the title tonight." And the other guy is screaming, no, fuck you, Edge. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And this continued literally throughout the entire match. All the way to the point where at the very end, when Edge speared Ray, one guy was screaming, yes, yes. And the other guy was screaming, no, no. And they kept doing that for all of the counts. That sounds phenomenal. And I thought there was going to be a brawl between these two friends <laughs> here like at the, the best end. crowd ever. I did not get them. The closest I got to them was the annoying guy behind me who felt the need to uh, share his great, vast wrestling uh, information database in his head with all people at all times, except that at least half the stuff he said was just violently wrong. Such as, the, he was the guy who suggested that if there's any one person in this company who is likely on steroids, it would be Vladimir Kozlov. Sure. Then, uh, well, yes. Later, he he, he was said he was certain that Shawn Michael was clean. He had no explanation for why Shawn was so much bigger than Hunter back in 97. But my favorite part of, the, of this guy's whole evening was he was talking about Montreal, of course. And he was talking about how uh, Shawn and Vince and everyone conspired to screw Bret Hart. And he talked about how that's why he would never cheer for the click. He'd never cheer for Shawn Michaels or Kevin Nash because of what they had done to his hero, Bret Hart. And there was a pause. And I'm not making this up. His friend said, you're wearing a Triple H (laughs) t-shirt. And he said, well, he was a latecomer. He's not really part of the gang. But I was, oh, no. I, well, I clearly just, he didn't see wrestling with shadows. Yeah, clearly you've not seen many of the interviews where Hunter claims I, the idea. So this guy was a fucking moron. But, uh, yeah, Edge came out, and he took out Kofi Kingston, and he jumped in the pod to take his place, and the ref said, okay. And then again, this is where I texted you and said, this is impact Yeah. There was also a guy, there was also a guy, uh, Cena came out, of course, and uh, he was he was cheered and booed, the usual reaction. And uh, there was one guy that just, he was hating him, and he was going, boo! Fuck you, Cena! Boo! And he's booing him and 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 catcalling him the whole match. And finally, Cena goes to do the five knuckle shuffle. And what does the guy say? You can't see me. Yes, yes. And right with everybody else. Uh, yes, I, I saw something. It I was, just wanted to go fuck you. It was kind of the opposite, but it shows how we all knew he gets split reactions from crowds, and he, he can get polarizing reactions from the same person. Because what I saw was a guy who, when Cena came out, a guy in front of me who was uh, slightly older, slightly fatter, and even whiter. Jumped to his feet and began to dance to his music. 
Yeah. And I thought, wow, okay, so you like John Cena, that's fine. The same guy, when Cena gets pinned, jumps up and down. Yeah, yeah, he's gone, yeah! <laughs> These people. What the hell? These people. He did, in fact, get uh, pinned by Edge. And, uh, in a that, fucking beautiful spot. That was quite the shocker. He, he came in, yeah, he, he his, his pod opened, uh, and, and he ran wild for a bit. He hit he hit the five knuckle shuffle. He picked up Edge for the, whatever they're calling it, the, not the FU. Jericho grabbed him, hit a code breaker, and Cena managed to drop Edge without dropping him on Jericho, so that was great. Cena took that, went to the ropes, and ate a 619, and then turned around into a spear and got pinned. It was great, and... The one thing that I, we could not see live, which I have since seen an animated gift form, the expressions on the faces of Chris Jericho and Edge as they realized Cena was gone. Fucking awesome. So then it came down to the very end to Edge and Ray, and they had an awesome series here of, of near falls and such, and they finally ended up outside, and, and Edge tossed him face first into a pod. <laughs> Young Ray was killed, rolled back into the ring, Edge speared him for the pin, and uh, this was four and a half stars because it did not involve the fucking mad Russian. Yeah. So, goddamn great stuff here. Yeah, this was... I like this better than chamber, the first chamber match, and really it was just because I liked Edge and Ray better than Hunter and Undertaker. That being said, I do have a nitpick. Uh, there became a point when it was just those two guys where Ray had about 18 big moves in a row, got about 18 near falls in a row, and it, he became the guy in UFC who is the third round and there's three minutes left and his opponent has nothing left and you can't put him away and you're thinking, just hit him with something. You deserve to lose. Do something. Finish this man. And then Edge hit one move and pinned him to make him look like a complete jobber. Which I guess, in a way, was the point because you want you, you have Edge as the champion going into Mania and not Ray, but I, I it could have been more back and forth. That being said, I thought it was fucking great stuff. Uh, I, like, I like this even better than the first chamber match. Uh, we were asking beforehand, why are Kofi and Mike Knox in this match? And it turned out Kofi was only there to be a placeholder for Edge. When they made this decision, who knows, but that's how it turned out. That still leaves Mike Knox, and I really don't have nothing against Knox's performance here. He was really good, and he was good again the next night on Raw. But he's so <laughs> not a star compared to everyone else. And his he was like third or fourth in for his pod to open. And they did the big light show, and his pod opened, and everyone went, oh... Everyone knew he was not winning. There was no point to him being there. It could have been Punk. It could have been Regal. It could have been a hundred other guys, but it was Mike Knox. There you go. That was a pay-per-view.